Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from chapter number 8 of EDC's book by Mr. Ballstead. And this is regarding FET amplifiers. And here we'll be discussing example 8.1 and example 8.2. So we have learned the, uh, uh, this is the configuration of uh, FET. This is what we call base in the transistor. In this case, we'll call gate. And this current from here, from uh, this is source end, this is source, and this is called drain. So from source to gate is current, and then there is from source to drain is a current so id and i g these two currents we'll be discussing then we'll also uh, talk about what is known as shockley's equation this formula is very familiar you must have learned in chapter number seven and from here we conclude that the drain to source current the id is the drain to source current is controlled by the gate voltage to source voltage, that means VGS. Because IDSS and VP is generally constant for a particular uh, FET. So we can say that ID is proportional to VGS or delta ID is proportional to delta VGS. Or we can replace the constant uh, proportionality with some constant. So delta ID is equal to GM delta VGS, where GM is, is called the transconductance factor. And so from this equation, we can write that GM is delta ID over delta VGS. And we have learned earlier how to uh, plot or how to find the Q point. First of all, using the Shockley's equation, we can plot a transfer characteristics. So this is dependent on the transistor. And then we can also plot this line, vertical line, uh, which is equal to the uh, uh, gate voltage. And this is dependent on the network. So this is called network line. So when we draw the network line on the trans, uh, transfer characteristic, wherever it touches that point is known as the Q point. So this we have discussed in detail in chapter number seven. Okay, now from this equation, we can see that this is actually the uh, uh, change in current and change in voltage and for that what we do is that at Q point we draw a tangent line and then we find the changes so tangent line little up little down so we get delta ID and this is delta VGS so using these two values we can calculate GM now let's do the example Determine the magnitude of GM for a JFET with IDSS 8 milliampere and VP is minus 4 at the following DC bias points or Q points. So these are the, uh, not Q points, sorry, is the DC bias uh, volt point, VGS. Let's understand from this graph here. GM formula we have learned. So this is the graph. And first, we we'll start with this VG 0.5. So 0 to minus 4 here and 0 to 8 uh, ID. And this point is 0.5. So if we take it up, straight line, so this is our first Q point. QAA, -A, I'm calling it. And at this point, we'll draw a slope. So we draw a tangent line. And then we find delta ID and delta VG, uh, VGS. This one you can approximately see that we will say from 5 
seven something so two point one is ID and from here we can guess it to be zero point six volt that is VGS. So Yes, so now writing these two values, we find GM. So 2.1 divided by 0 0.6, so it's 3.5 milli Siemens. It's not second, it's Siemens I over V. So we have used the first one. Now the second one is 1.5, so it will be somewhere here. So 1.5, same way we draw the tangent line, we find the difference in ID and then difference in VGS and plugging in the values 1.8 and 0 0.7, we get GM to be 2.57 millisiemens. And the third one is minus 2.5. Drawing slope and again finding the difference. It's 1.5 and this one is 1. So it is 1.5 millisiemens. So what we can note is that the GM is decreasing as VGS approaches VP. VGS approaches VP, that means here, is getting flatter and flatter. And therefore, the slope GM is getting less. So 3.5, 2.57, Now, this was the graphical method. We can also find it by mathematical method. So let's derive the mathematical formula from the definition of GM. The graphical procedure just described is limited by the accuracy of the transfer plot. An alternative approach is to determine GA. GM employs the approach used to find the AC resistance of a diode in Chapter 1. And where it was stated that the derivative of a function at a point is equal to the slope of the tangent line. So, by finding the slope, we can find this, and the slope is actually the derivative taken. We therefore take the derivative of ID with respect to VG using Shockley's equation. GM can be written as derivative of ID over derivative of VGS at the Q point. And ID by Shockley's equation is this one. IDS is constant, we're taking out if this. Now, if you remember the derivative of x square, we write 2x, then derivative of x. Same thing we'll do here. So, IDS is 2 of the function and the derivative of the function in bracket. And the derivative of 1 and derivative of VGS. So derivative of 1 is 0 and derivative of this one is 1 over Vp. And so we can say that Gm is 2 Rds over Vp, 1 minus Vg, Vp. So we'll use this formula. Where Vp denotes the magnitude only to ensure the positive value of Gm. So we are taking the mod here of Vp. Okay, so we were at this equation. The slope of the transfer curve is maximum at Vg is equal to 0. Now you can see the, the uh, as we come closer to 0, the slope is getting maximum. So the maximum value at 0 in the equation we can call it uh, plugging Vg is equal to 0 here. We can find Gm maximum and we'll call now this Vp is 0, Vg is 0. 
so we give it a new name and we call it gm0 actually should have been written as gm maximum but anyway so gm0 is this value this is zero it is the value of gm when vgs is equal to zero that is why uh, we are writing zero so the general equation this one now 2id vp we can write it as gm0 so this will be the general equation now now uh, let's see this question for the jpt having the transfer characteristics of example 8.1 so same uh, same circuit same characteristics we have to find the maximum value of gm first of all and then find gm at each operating point of example 8.1 so you see there were three operating points so we're using that and then compare the results with the graphical results so let's do it one by one This was the circuit, uh, this was the graph transfer characteristics curve, and these were the two equations that we derived. So maximum GM will write this formula. And from the circuit, IDSS was 8 milli and VP is minus 4. So take magnitude of that. So GM0 is 4 milli Siemens. First part is done. Now part B, find the value of GM at each operating point and then compare. So let's do it by, okay, these were the operating points. Minus 0 0.5, minus 1.5 and minus 2.5. So let's do the first one at minus 0 0.5. This was the general equation that we derived. GM0, we have found 4 milli Siemens. 1 VG 0 0.5 and this is minus 4. So the answer is 3.5 milli Siemens. And graphically, we found it to be 3.5 milli Siemens also. So they are same. Then a second point, 1.5. Again, we just plug in the value 1.5 here. So GM is 2.5 milli Siemens now. And in the graph, we found 2.57 milli milli Siemens. And the third point, minus 2.5, we find it to be 1.5 milli Siemens. And in the graph also, we found 1.5 milli Siemens. So we can conclude that the we are, uh, the mathematical method is good enough, valid to validate equation 8.5 and 8.6 and for future we can use this mathematical formula instead of going graphically so i hope you have been able to follow this please let me know through your comments thank you